For the longest time, I sought the height of perfection. I dreamt of giving my heart and soul to battle an unstoppable adversary. I'm a lucky man. I'm thankful for everything that led me to this point, that led me to you. Hello and welcome to Hunter Hunter 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the Hunter Hunter world. Today, we are going to be launching an investigation into a man who was once called the most powerful Nen user in the world, Isaac Netero. Isaac Netero is a seemingly joyous and surprisingly muscular centenarian who was first introduced in the series during the Hunter exam arc as the 12th chairman of the Hunter Association. During this introduction, Netero was presented as an eccentric elder, a very mischievous person to whom many other individuals would characterize as straddling the borders of insanity. However, in reality, this was but a shell masking an extraordinarily complex character, both selfish and selfless, an arbiter of order, as well as an agent of chaos, who was capable of great good and great evil. And to really attain a solid understanding of Netero, we need to travel back in time to when he was the comparatively youthful age of 46. During this time, Netero ascended into the mountains in order to train his body and mind. Here, he would develop a daily ritual of performing 10,000 punches to show his gratitude towards martial arts, a feat that would take him a total of 18 hours to complete on the very first day, resulting in Netero collapsing from sheer exhaustion, only to awaken the next day and repeat the offering. After two years had passed, Netero found that he was able to complete the ritual before the sun had even set. And by the time he reached the age of 50, Netero was able to offer 10,000 punches within a mere hour. And with all of his newfound free time, Netero delved deep into prayer that eventually led him to achieving a state of enlightenment. By the time he descended from the mountains, Netero had transcended the natural limits of humanity, acquiring an ability to strike faster than the speed of sound and developing a legion of followers begging to be trained by him, resulting in the founding of the Shingen Ryu School of Kung Fu. But as for why Netero engaged in this four year endeavor to begin with, well, to put it simply, Simply, it's because Netero lived for the pursuit of power and the thrill of challenge. Netero held immense pride for his own accomplishments, although he was a far from benevolent martial arts master, as he harbored absolutely no respect or tolerance for the weak. But after acquiring the pinnacle of power, Netero's goal was simplified to the mere act of finding a worthy adversary. In this pursuit, he actively welcomed challenges at his dojo, although each and every one of them would be defeated. Eventually, Netero would grow tired of searching for a challenge in the known world and decided to embark on two expeditions to the Dark Continent, a colossal area of the world containing incredibly powerful extinction level threats that is forbidden to the general public and even members of the Hunters Association. However, despite the unrivaled danger presented by this location, Netero would leave unsatisfied satisfied because the Dark Continent did not contain the opponent he was looking for, and the only victory to be gained there was survival. Returning to the realm of humanity, Netero continued his fruitless search, and in the process, he would come to be elected as the 12th chairman of the Hunter Association. And in this new position, he adopted a great sense of leadership, becoming an unwavering symbol of strength for the association. However, he did implement many controversial actions, such as appointing Pariston Hill as vice chairman, purely for the perplexing reason that Netero was entirely incapable of getting along with him. And so as a result, under Netero's watchful eye, no less, Pariston began a career of consistently undermining the integrity of the association, as well as Netero himself. But of course, as head of the association, Netero was also charged with overseeing the Hunter exam, a notoriously brutal endeavor where Netero's complete lack of empathy was demonstrated firsthand, as he willingly propagated a system based on weeding out unfit candidates via the art of frequent fatalities. Although it would be during one of these exams that we would first encounter Netero through Gon and Killua, where he demonstrated his more mischievous side by offering to allow them to become hunters directly should they be able to complete the simple task of taking a ball from him. Furthermore, Netero also decided to conduct this challenge without using his right arm or his left leg. Killua, with his extensive combat experience, very quickly realized that they had absolutely no chance and refused to participate any further. However, the more, how shall we put this, basic Gon refused to back down until he forced him to use his right hand, much to the amusement of Netero. And during the final phase of the exam, Netero's sense of respect for strength would be on full display in the form of a bracket he crafted for a rather intriguing combat tournament. Using Netero logic, each combatant would only have to win one round to attain their hunter's license, whilst the loser would advance. Not only that, but those who had performed well in the exam up until this point were given more opportunities to pass, whereas those who hadn't were given two chances at most. In essence, crafting a tournament that had it played out exactly according to plan, only one individual, i.e. the very weakest, would have lost. However, not every decision 
decision made by Netero was committed in order to satiate a twisted desire for challenge, as he frequently laid down decrees in the interest of the public and hunter safety. One of which was lobbying the V5 to forbid travel to the Dark Continent, and there were even moments during the Chimera Antarch where Netero prioritized achieving a particular goal over pursuing personal challenges. Speaking of, it would not be until the Chimera Antarch that the full extent of Netero's absurd abilities would be revealed. As in response to the threat presented by the Chimera Ants, Netero formed an extermination team charged with the lofty task of saving humanity from extinction. The most important act of which was killing the Ant King Meruem, a task that would fall to Netero himself. Now generally, this wouldn't be such a big ask. However, it should be noted that prior to the invasion of the palace, Netero asked a Chimera Ant by the name of Colt to compare his aura to that of Meruem, to which Colt replied that Netero's power was nowhere near enough to combat the Ant King, sparking a wildfire of challenge within Netero because after what had felt like an eternity, Netero had finally found someone who he was able to fight all out against. And in the preceding battle against Meruem, Netero aptly demonstrated why he was once called the strongest Nen user in the world. At this point, it should be noted that Netero is an enhancer when it comes to Nen. However, he also possesses an extraordinary mastery over emission and manipulation. And in fact, it is through a combination of these aforementioned types that Netero developed his strongest ability, the 100 type Guanyin Bodhisattva. Through this ability, Netero is able to emit a gigantic statue of Guan Yin, the arms of which he can control by clasping his hands together, mimicking a prayer. After this, Netero is then able to select one of 100 different motions, each of which correspond to one of the statue's hands. Now in the possession of almost anybody else, this ability would be prohibitively slow to use in any way effectively. However, in the hands of Netero, a man who at the very least over half a century ago, mastered the art of throwing 10,000 punches within an hour, this ability was devastating. With Netero managing to complete a full attack process, in less than 0.1 of a second. Furthermore, Netero even possessed one other ultimate attack known as Zero Hand, which has the statue of Guan Yin appear behind an opponent, clasp them tightly with both hands, and then mercilessly fire every last bit of Netero's raw aura at them. And with these 101 hands, Netero's attack combinations are seemingly infinite. Although even with all of that said, not even this was enough to conquer the Ant King. After several exchanges, Meruem deduced Netero's unconscious bias for using certain combinations and ended up severing Netero's right leg, and shortly after that, his left arm. To top it all off, at this point, Meruem was completely unscathed, even after being struck by Netero's zero hand ability. This was an overwhelming, impossible situation that Netero had never encountered and was certain to result in his death. And to his great credit, despite his up until now unparalleled strength, Netero understood that this was indeed a possibility and the potential of which even excited him further as he stood to the challenge that he had sought out his entire life. And with the assistance of an explosive known as the poor man's rose, which had been implanted into his body, Netero chose to end his life, conveying one last message of humanity's potential for cruelty and malice by eradicating Meruem, as well as two of his royal guards, and as collateral damage, an innocent civilian named Komugi. So I said in the beginning that Netero could be described as an extraordinarily complex character, both selfish and selfless, an arbiter of order and an agent of chaos, capable of great good and great evil. And as it turns out, there is another word for that sort of complexity, a word that is difficult to apply to Netero, having now understood exactly how he was able to transcend himself, but that word is human. Some more fun facts about Isaac Netero. Following the Chimera Antarch, it was revealed that Netero not only understood the possibility, but also even predicted his death at the hands of Meruem, and recorded a video detailing the process to be used for the election of the next chairman of the Hunter Association. Despite Netero's notoriety, he himself has admitted that there are at least four to five Nen users in the world who are equal to or stronger than he. However, this does not necessarily mean that these individuals are stronger than him, and Netero himself has a tendency to publicly downplay his own power, making him a very unreliable source on the topic. At some stage during his life, Netero found the time to have a child, who is rather creatively named Beyond Netero, a man who follows in his father's footsteps so closely that he has even secretly traveled to the Dark Continent and plans on doing so once again. Netero also seems to have quite a strong history with the Zoldic family, having been good friends with Zig Zoldic, as well as having allegedly been the only one to fight against Maha Zoldic and live. Furthermore, he is on very familiar terms with Xeno Zoldic, and plus, of course, he even encountered Killua Zoldic during the 287th Hunter exam. One of Netero's most notable lines in the series is him claiming that he had dreamt of giving his heart and soul to battle an unstoppable adversary. And in the end, he did achieve this dream by focusing all of his aura into the Zero Hand Blast, thus giving his soul, and with his final act of piercing his heart to end his life to activate the poor man's rose. Despite the fact that the 100 type Guan Yin Bodhisattva is considered to be Netero's most powerful ability, his natural Nen affinity of enhancement does not appear to be tapped in its use, at least not on a surface level anyway. It has been theorized that the enhancement does play a role in regards to Netero using it to accelerate his speed and reflexes, although that is entirely speculation at the time of this recording. 
And finally, a truly useless fact. When Netero was toying with Gon and Killua during the Hunter exam, he was able to fend them off without using his right arm or left leg. And those just so happened to be the two limbs that he was left with after his encounter with Meruem. But that pretty much does it for Isaac Netero. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the New World Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if Patreon isn't quite your style, then please do leave this video a like, share, or subscribe because it also helps support this channel an incredible amount. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured on the next Hunter Hunter 101.